All right, we have another midterm review prob uh, midterm review video here with a couple extra practice problems. These problems were in your PowerPoint towards the end, so you should recognize these problems from there as well. All right, so um, police department gets, on any given day, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 calls. Actually, you would hope most police call stations get more than this. But anyway, in a small town police department, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 calls. Here's the probabilities of those calls on each day. So consider two days. So first off, keep in mind here that we are considering two days. So we are going to be multiplying here because we got to think about day one and then day two. Okay, so what is the probability a total of five calls come in over those two days? Days. Now, how can I get a total of five calls? Well, I can get four the first day, then one the second day, or one the first day, four the second day, that is different, or two the first day, three the second day, or three the first day, two the second day. So now all I got to do is walk through these options. So four would be 0 0.05 times one would be 0 0.40. Or as a plus, another option. Again, I'm adding because I can't have all of these options happen at once. The 1 would be 0 0.40 times 0 0.05 for the 4. Or another option. Sorry, my handwriting's a little sloppy there. Uh, the 2 would be 0 0.15 times the 0 0.10 for the 3. Or another option would mathematically be the same, but it is different because the order for these. So get on your calculator, multiply, 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 add these four options together, you should come up with 0.07 or a 7% chance that you get five calls coming in total. Okay, next one is what is the probability both days get the same amount of calls? So both days get the same amount of calls. That would be zero the first day, zero the second day. That would be getting the same amount of calls. Or one the first day, one the second day. Or two the first day, two the second day, or three the first day, three the second day, or four, and then four. Again, these would be the options for the same amount of calls both days. So again, I'm going to make this a little bit easier by just doing 0.3 squared, right? So that'd be the 0, 0, 0.3 times 0.3, or 0.4 squared, or 0.15 squared, or 0.10 squared, or 0.05 squared. So doing this on your calculator, you should come up with a final answer of 0.285 or 28.5% chance that you get the same amount of calls on both days. So pretty easy problem there, but I just want to make sure you guys truly understand how to work with these probability models. Okay, die A has three twos, two ones, and one zero. Okay, wait a minute, I'm already a little bit lost. Let me think about die A, die a here. So there are three twos. So there's three twos. That's three out of six are two. There's two ones. So that's two out of six that are one. And there's one zero. So there is one out of six that are zero because a die has six sides. That's where I'm getting that six from. Okay, now I got die B here. Die B has two twos. So there's a two out of six chance of getting a two. Four threes. So there is a four out of six chance of getting a three, and that's it. Those would be the six sides for die B. Okay, when either side of these dice is rolled, each face has an equal chance of landing up. The two dice are tossed, which the following represents the probability distribution for the sum. All right, so I'm thinking about the sum here, and I'm thinking about what could possibly happen. All right, well, one option could be um, I get a sum of two, uh, or a sum of three, or a sum of four. Now, there's actually no other possibilities. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take that back. You could get a sum of five. Outside of that, there's no other possibilities. Let's make sure we understand the probability. How would I get a sum of two? Well, the only way to get a sum of two would be the zero and then the two. So that would be one sixth for the zero times two sixth for the two on die B. There's... Um, no other way that could happen, right? Zero and then two. Now, the only other thing that could happen is I flip that around, right? I get the uh, two on the B and then the zero on the A. But, well, wait a minute. Again, this is the only way it's happened, right? This would be die A and die B. I can't flip it around because die B cannot be zero. So the only way this can happen is if A is zero and B is two. It's the only way this could happen, which would be total... 2 out of 36. So multiplication there. Now, how do I get a 3? Well, I could get die A could be a 2, 
and well, wait a minute. If actually, if die A is a two, there's no way you can get a three because of what happens on die B. So again, let's think this through here. Okay, die A could be a one, and then I could get a two on die B. Now this is die A and die B. Now I can't flip that around because I cannot get a one on die B. So this is the only way that can happen. But there is actually another option here. Okay, the other option I could do is get a zero on die A, and then I get a two. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Take that back. I get a three, right? Sum of three here. I get a three on die B. Again, I can't flip that around. I, I can't do three then zero because I cannot get a zero on die B. So the only way this could work is A, zero, B, three. So let me walk through this now. Okay, one on A is two sixths times 2 on B is 2 sixths, or the other option would be a 0 on die A, 1 sixth, times die B would have to be the 4 sixths. So again, this is going to be 4 sixths plus 4 sixths, um, I'm sorry, 4 sixths plus 4 sixths, which would be 8 out of 36 there for that option. All right, how could I get a 4? Well, I could get a 2 on A and a 2 on B. So 2 on A and then a 2 on B. Okay, so that's 2 on A, 2 on B. All right, I can't flip that around because the flipping that around would be a 2 on B and a 2 on A, which is the exact same thing. But there is another way. I can get a 1 on A and a 3 on B. 1 on A, 3 on B. Um, now, I can't get a 3 on A, so I can't flip that around because that's the only way it can happen. So let's see, 2 on A, 2 sixth. Whoop. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry for a lot of mess-ups here. All right, uh, let's do redo that. 2 on A is 3 sixths. And then a 2 on B is 2 sixths. Or 1 on A, 1 on A is 2 sixths. And then on B, that is a 3, which is 4 sixths. So let's see here. That's going to be 636 plus 836, or 14 36. That's 636 plus 836 is 1436. All right, lastly, we'll be getting a 5. How would I get a 5? That'd be a 2 on A, 3 on B. 2 on A, 3 on B. That's the only way I could think about getting a 5. 2 on A, 3 on B. Can that happen any other way? Well, I can't flip it around because I cannot get a 3 on A. That's impossible. So it looks like this is the only way. So that would be 3 out of 6 for the A times 4 out of 6 for the 3 on the B or 12 out of 36. Now, one way I can make sure I'm right here is if I add up these options. So I got 2 for the option of getting a 2, 8 options for getting the 3, 14 for getting the 4, plus 12 for getting the 5, and that is 36 out of 36. So these options do add up. So um, hopefully I understand this problem. I, I hope I think it makes a lot of sense here. Obviously, I could reduce any of these fractions. For example, the 2 out of 36 um, could definitely be reduced to 1 18th and so forth. So don't forget you can reduce these. But hopefully that makes sense in terms of how I had to really think about A's and B's and how some situations you couldn't switch around because, for example, you can't get a 0 or 1 on die B. So you can't always switch things around, especially in this scenario. All right, last problem here. There's a 35% chance a cutting machine breaks down because it needs oil. Okay. If it does break down due to needing oil, okay, this sounds conditional. So I'm going to start off right away here with a nice little chart here. So I got a 35% chance the machine breaks down because it needs oil. Now, if sounds conditional to me. So if it breaks down because it needs oil, there's a 15% chance it does need a new blade. Okay, now that would mean that there's an 85% chance it does not need a new blade. No new blade. Okay, now, if the machine does not break down to oil, well, let's think about that. So, it does not break down to oil, so no oil problem. That would be the other 65% chance, because 35% chance it does break down for oil, 65% it does not break down for oil. There is a 6% chance it still needs a new blade. So, even if there's no oil issue, there still is a 6% chance issue that it needs a new blade, and that would be 94% chance that there is no blade. So let's see here. If I think about my options, this first option right here, I have both problems, right? I got oil and I need a new blade. 
This bottom option is there's none, no problems whatsoever. No oil, no new blade, everything's working good. These other options are just one problem, right? This would be just oil, blade is okay. This option right here would be new blade, but no oil problem. So the question says, what's the probability machine has at least one of these two problems? At least one is one or more. Now, that would be this option right here where there's only an oil problem, this option right here where there's only a blade issue, or even this option right here where there's both. So I could certainly calculate those three branches and add them together. That's very simple, but I'm actually going to do an easier way. I'm going to find the probability that there's no problems, no problems whatsoever. That's easy. 0.65, not an oil problem, times 0.94, not a new blade either. If I calculate this, 0.65 times 0.94, I get 0.611. This is the chance there is no problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. So if I do 1 minus that, I'll be left with at least one problem. Now, and I get 0.389. So 0.389 is my final answer. Now, I could have gotten this by doing oil and new blade, 0.35 times 0.15. Or, so plus oil and no new blade, 0.35 times 0.85 or plus no oil, and it still needs a new blade, 0.65 times 0.06. Those are the three options that re result in at least one problem. Again, at least one, both one or one. Now, again, like I said, I thought the problem was a lot easier if I just calculate no problem whatsoever. Doesn't need new oil, 65%. Doesn't need a new blade, 94%. That's 0.611. If I get rid of those... If I get rid of that option, I'm left with at least one, which is the 0.389. So hopefully that's a pretty easy problem as well, and um, hopefully you can be prepared for a problem just like that on your midterm. All right, guys, that's it. Hopefully that was an easy video.